So thank, thank you all for coming, and thanks to our hosts, uh, Ariel and DigitalOcean as well, for hosting us. So I know you want to get to the Istio and Envoy part, but before I get there, what have to do with the obligatory? We are hiring, and I'm going to do this up front, because uh, if you have any sort of deep skills in networking and or Kubernetes, we'd love to talk to you. Have my cards in the back. Uh, if you want to come work on some of the exciting things going on in Kubernetes networking, come talk to us. Okay, so let's let me start there. Before I sort of dive deeper into sort of a service mesh, I want to just do a quick poll because I'm assuming you guys are at a Kubernetes meetup or at the DigitalOcean meetup, uh, so you have some familiarity with Kubernetes. I'm going to assume. Um, I'm assuming you've all at some point deployed Kubernetes. I've spoke to a few of you who hadn't yet. But when you look at Kubernetes networking specifically, uh, these are sort of common concepts. And I still talk to people who are confused about some of these concepts. How many of you understand what these are in a fairly, depth, fairly good depth? OK, so roughly one fifth of the room. OK, so I want to just do a couple of minutes to do a quick intro for, to set some context for you guys before we dive into the deeper concept, right? So from a Kubernetes networking perspective, obviously in Kubernetes, your application, your, your application microservices are being deployed as pods. A pod is a collection of containers with a shared network namespace. And so typically from a networking perspective, there's sort of multiple abstractions that come into play in Kubernetes. All of them typically work in concert with each other. And assuming you use um, implementations of those concepts that work in that abstraction, things generally work pretty well and work at scale. And to kind of go through what those are, so this, uh, the concept of CNI, or Container Network Interface, is an abstraction by which di different network plugins can interface into Kubernetes. Kubernetes chose CNI, and they provide pod-to-pod -pod connectivity. So when you have an application that launches dozens of pods or hundreds of pods, those pods need, typically get an IP address, and they, they communicate over IP. And the network plugin provides that uh, communication. So different plugins have different approaches to do that. I'll quickly mention Calico as one approach, which is a very scalable and simple approach that a lot of people use in the Kubernetes community. But there's numerous other approaches. We also, Tigera, the company I work for, is the company behind Calico, but we also co-maintain Flannel. Uh, Tigera, we, uh, some of our people are actually co-maintainers of CNI, the, uh, the CNI interface itself. And we're pretty active within the Kubernetes networking community in maintaining some of these uh, concepts there. Uh, alongside CNI network plugins, you have the concept of network policy. And this is something we'll come back to when we do the demo on SQ and Envoy, which is, uh, so network policy is the concept by which an application developer or a deployer can express in a declarative fashion, typically through YAML syntax, how you want your application flows to be isolated from each other. So this provides you a much more declarative way to provide security enforcement rather than the early days of VM networking where the way, ways that people provided isolation between flows was to create multiple network overlays. And what that caused was, back in the early days, that caused you to have this sort of very complex network overlay mechanisms. And it caused performance issues. It caused operations issues. It's, it was really, really hard to scale to large infrastructure sizes. So what Kubernetes has done, and in fact, all of the container orchestrators are moving this way, is to now provide an, an ability to declaratively uh, describe how your application flows are uh, need to be isolated from each other so that you can, you can really isolate them in a, in, in a much more scalable approach and at the same time try and simplify and make the network more scalable, right? So we'll come back to that as well. Uh, the concept of services is a way where you're providing an abstraction so that you can reach individual microservices independent of how many pods are actually implementing that in the back end. And so the concept of services in Kubernetes is typically expressed through Kube proxy are implemented through Kube proxy, which gives, gives a service a cluster virtual IP. You can give it things like a node port if you want it externally accessible. And you can also plug into things like external load balancers, such as your favorite cloud load balancer if you want to. Uh, another concept somewhat distinct from that is the concept of ingress, where you can use things like application level headers or HTTP headers to process traffic and redirect traffic in a flexible fashion coming in, into and out of the Kubernetes cluster, right? 
And the concept of service mesh, which is one of the newer concepts, is something that allows you to uh, do a lot more flexible traffic management, load balancing, uh, application specific capabilities that we'll talk about in more detail today. And service meshes, uh, like in the case of Iskio, for example, it can actually plug in as an ingress controller, but there's other elements to it in terms of both east-west traffic as well, and we'll talk about that in more detail today, right? So these are all concepts that are part of sort of the Kubernetes networking uh, fabric. And in a, in a nicely designed system, they should generally work with each other. So they all sort of work in, in concert with each other. I will, I will reemphasize this. One of the nice things about Kubernetes is that it decouples network policy from the actual networking mechanism. So now it allows you to, to uh, declaratively express what you want in terms of isolation between applications. And that allows you to focus on the, the networking part of Kubernetes on just connecting workloads together, right? So that is a fundamental concept that Kubernetes brings to the table. And an example of that, just a quick plug for Calico, is that Calico is an example of how you can do this in a very scalable fashion. Uh, it's an open source project. It's one of the more commonly deployed plugins with Kubernetes. It, uh, it is one of the, uh, uh, the reference impl implementations, if you will, for network policy in Kubernetes, given that the team behind Project Calico helped develop, uh, helped develop that uh, specification for Kubernetes which is now moving in, into uh, full, full uh, towards beta until 1.6. Now in 1.7, it's being escalated, uh, being uh, brought out into full support on Kubernetes. And the way this works is uh, in Kubernetes, when you, when you have Calico working as a policy plugin, by the way, Calico works across multiple orchestrators, not just Kubernetes. It works on Mesos, it works on uh, Docker, it works on even VM-based platforms like OpenStack and others. It also works from a policy perspective on Linux instances. So if you have Linux instances in, a, in, a, in your favorite cloud, you could tie it into this dynamic policy environment seamlessly with Kubernetes. So if you have a database running on, on a host Linux instance and you need to tie it to a Kubernetes environment and be able to manage policy dynamically, Calico can do that. But the way it works is that there's the policy enforcement part of that, and that is captured through a declarative fashion where when someone deploys an application in Kubernetes in the pod spec, you will be declaring, okay, this is a Redis application. And all of the pods that you spin up are going to be labeled Redis, they're going to be labeled uh, production, and they're labeled belonging to project A. And in, that you will, in the network policy, you will express in, in YAML format, that all Redis pods need to be allowed to talk to all, for an example, Nginx pods over port 8080. And as Kubernetes spins these pods up and down, that policy is dynamically enforced by Calico as the network policy implementation, irrespective of where in the infrastructure and how many pods are running in the infrastructure, right? So that policy is implemented by Calico using IP sets in the Linux kernel. And what that means is if you have 50 Redis pods and 500 Nginx pods, that you can actually look up in a single IP sets lookup what needs to be allowed to talk to what. And it's a very scalable and distributed way of implementing policy. And that what, what that enables Calico to do is then have a networking fabric that's really scalable. And the way Calico provides scalable networking is by leveraging the principles that we use for internet routing. Specifically, Calico uses BGP for exchanging container IP addresses with each other within the, within the Kubernetes cluster. And so essentially, that's BGP between the Calico nodes. And what that means is the same scalability that you get for the internet, you can get for your Kubernetes environment. I, I get this question a lot from customers like, hey, so uh, what's the scalability limits on your own Calico networking? And that way I usually respond is, what are the scalability limits on the internet? So that's sort of the power of Calico. So today, you look at Kubernetes deployments at scale, going beyond a couple dozen, three, three, four dozen nodes. Generally, Calico is typically the default networking plugin at scale. Um, I had more detail then. Of course, this is all available on the common Kubernetes orchestrate, uh, common Kubernetes distributions. 
plug to the StackPoint folks as well as the DigitalOcean folks. It's available there as well. StackPoint makes it really easy to deploy Calico among you know, your favorite public cloud. And, but it's also available in all of the um, other common public cloud options. In fact, many of them use Calico as a default networking behind the scenes as well. And so what this means in a Kubernetes cluster perspective is so you have your Kubernetes artifacts, you have Calico running as a pod, and essentially plugged in via CNI and gives every pod an IP address, shares that IP address with other nodes in a scalable routed fashion, an aggregated route. And so essentially it's a very simple and scalable model to do networking across very large Kubernetes clusters. Okay? So that's a quick, in a quick nutshell what Calico does. Obviously it enforces policy across multiple orchestrators as well. And to quickly switch to the first demo, so what I have here is basically three, um, three instances. I've spun them up on a cloud. Uh, right now, they're not, they're not really running anything. And what we're going to do is, because some of you said you haven't installed uh, Kubernetes before, this is going to show you installing Kubernetes is really, 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 really easy. Go home, do it. There's no reason why you shouldn't be doing it, okay? So what I have is I have a couple of uh, master, I have a couple of windows on a master node, and I have three worker node instances. And so what we'll do is, I'm gonna use Cube Admin to install, but pick your favorite installer. Cube Admin is one of the simpler ones. The other installers do more fancy things, which take a little bit more time, but generally they're all pretty simple. The way you get it started is, you do a Cube Admin in it, on the master, it takes about 15, 10, 15 seconds, depending on the image, image size it's pulling down. And um, if all goes well, if demo gods are good to us, we should have a master ready to go. And what it's doing is basically setting up the different Kubernetes daemons, uh, the Kubernetes components on the master, um, and sets them up, and there we go. So the master is sort of ready. We are not completely ready. One, one thing we're gonna do here is, uh, I said cube cuddle. Oh. All right, so we're just going to watch what's happening in the master. So we've got cube admin that's initialized the master, but we don't have networking yet. And you, the way you do that is Calico is deployed as a self hosted. as a self-hosted daemon set. So essentially you're launching Calico through Kubernetes and it launches the Calico node uh, pod on every, every uh, node in the cluster as they come up. And you'll essentially see the Calico node uh, pod spin up. Should take a few seconds and generally that should go pretty seamlessly. The next thing we do is we will simply join each of the worker nodes to the cluster using this command. So we could just go ahead and do this on each of the nodes. And what you'll see is you'll see a Calico node spinning up for each worker node. And it should take a few seconds and they should all get the IP addresses and you're up and running. So in effect, what you have now is a four node Kubernetes cluster. You have a master and three worker nodes. That didn't take, it, did it take two minutes, one minute, right? Honestly, this is super, super easy. So go home, try it out. In fact, you can try it out right now. Okay, so you have your Kubernetes cluster running. So let's now get to the Istio part. But before we get to the Istio part, I want to actually give you a little bit of intro on what that is. Um, before I do that, just a quick plug for Calico. So this is super simple, as you saw. Didn't, shouldn't take you more than a minute or two. We've got clusters of thousands of nodes. It's pretty common for Calico to be deployed. We have a customer with something like 9,000 nodes, right? So this thing scales really well. Essentially, what Calico is doing is leveraging the same protocols that are used in the internet, and so it scales really well but also seamlessly works with things like Iskio and Envoy because it doesn't do anything too fancy. It keeps the infrastructure really simple. 
It uses pure unencapsulated networking, so it doesn't try and create overlays. And so by avoiding overlays, it keeps your operations really simple, but it also helps it integrate really seamlessly with things like service meshes. And finally, from a security perspective, it leverages Kubernetes network policy to provide isolation. So coming to Istio and Envoy. So what is Istio? Istio is Istio and Envoy together, they work hand in hand, are an implementation of a service mesh for Kubernetes. Fundamentally, what they provide is the ability to provide application level traffic management and load balancing, and the ability to provide resilience across failures. So if you have your application that's being served up by multiple services or multiple pods at the back end, and you have individual pods that come up and down, uh, Iskio and Envoy work hand in hand to provide the ability to monitor the response times, to look at telemetry, look at various factors, and to sort of load balance your traffic intelligently. If you want to do things like canary style deployments or AB style deployments, you can do that with policy, and that's the policy part of uh, of, uh, of Iskio and Envoy. They can also do interesting things like seamlessly provide security, both encryption and authentication. And, and, and they, they, so Iskio leverages something called Spiffy, which is a, a security uh, production um, uh, identity framework for everyone else. That's what the acronym expands out to. But it's a, it's a concept that I think Joe Bega came up with, one of the founders of Kubernetes. Uh, formerly at Google, now at Heptio, on how do you provide sort of uh, certificate management to be able to isolate indiv individual flows from each other and give them a, a distinct identity and to do that at scale. And so Iskio and Envoy help, Iskio sort of implements that and leverages Envoy for that. And finally, to be able to provide some detailed telemetry and reporting for what your applications are doing within your Kubernetes cluster and to be able to report back on sort of visibility and dashboarding and give you some nice uh, telemetry. Maybe also plug in other tooling such as uh, tracing, such as um, um, uh, uh, tracing Prometheus for statistics to be able to do things like graphing of your microservices flows and give you visualizations of that. So there's a bunch of different capabilities, right? And all of these are exposed through this concept of a service mesh. So what is a service mesh? And how is it implemented? So the concept is essentially, so you have something called as an Iskio pod, which is essentially a controller pod. It sets up the control elements of what the service mesh is required to do. And on each pod in your Kubernetes cluster, you get a tiny little sidecar of really, really highly efficient and really small, something like 10 megabytes, 10 to 12 megabytes, depending on what, what options you, you package in that is injected as a sidecar into every pod. And that Envoy sidecar, the, the little E you see there is the Envoy sidecar. It's built with C++. It was actually built by Lyft, um, the, car com the car ride sharing company Lyft, and they open sourced it uh, sometime last year. And it's something that's been getting a lot of traction. And so Envoy runs as a sidecar into every, in every pod and essentially functions as a proxy within the, within the pod. And the control f functions for that sidecar are manipulated using Iskio, right? So Iskio runs as a, uh, uh, as a pod in your environment, and it manipulates the rules under which Envoy operates. So you have a whole bunch of flexible uh, operations that you can program in via Iskio that are then enforced by Envoy as traffic comes into and out of your microservices running on top of Kubernetes. So, uh, you had a question? Yeah. How are you going to compare to uh, later things? Yeah, let's hold that question till the end. I want to come back and talk to that. I want to just do a quick demo and we'll do the comparison between Linkerd and this queue and Envoy. Envoy is about 10 to 12 megabytes. The question was what's the memory footprint of Envoy? Uh, so, that's about 10 to 12 megabytes. The other question was how does it compare to Linkerd? We'll come back and talk to being a sidecar, Linkerd can also run as a sidecar. Linkerd is Java, Envoy, C++. Uh, so there are different sort of options there, but we'll come back and do a more detailed comparison. So just one quick question. So Istio itself is a daemon set? Is the plug as a daemon set? Uh, Istio, Istio runs as a, uh, as a uh, not as a daemon set, but you ha basically have an Istio, uh, you have a replica, replica set for Istio. 
And so you essentially have uh, the Ischio controller running as a part in the infrastructure. It doesn't necessarily have to be running on every node in the, in the cluster. But it does make sense to have more than one per node. Correct. OK, so let's do a quick install of uh, Istio and Envoy. Again, this should be really simple. This is Kubernetes. Keep things simple, right? So let's get back onto the master. We have our cluster running. And uh, I'm actually running uh, the earlier release. We just, uh, the, the team actually just released uh, 1 .0 .0 .0 0.2. I'm actually running 0.1.3, but it shouldn't really matter. So. The first thing I'm applying via kubectl is the RBAC rules for Istio. And so essentially, it's setting up the different service accounts and the permissions for that. So Kubernetes 1.6, that's uh, essentially, now you have RBAC, so it, you set it up first. The next thing you do is install Istio itself. And you should see the pods come up here. And there you go, so it's up and running. Iski also provides a few add-ons, so you can install them as well. Um, so there's things like Prometheus, Zipkin, Grafana. Uh, it provides a few add-ons, and so essentially what you're doing is you've just installed those add-ons. So again, it hasn't taken very long. So you now have Iski and Envoy running. And to give you an idea of what these look like, so if you do a uh, I didn't set up a load balancer, so I'll just do a... KubeCut will get service, and I'll use the node ports to talk to the things directly. So for example, Grafana is 32 to 90. Um, so if you look at what they look like on a browser. So there's your Grafana dashboard. Let's go to the Istio portion. Make it a little smaller. At this point, there are no transactions. You haven't, don't have any services deployed, so it's pretty empty. Um, we can come back and look at the others, but uh, you know, there's Prometheus, there's Zipkin. It uh, provides uh, .viz graphs uh, as well. So there's sort of different additional services that it, that Istio provides, but you know it. it it just de deploys them as, uh, deploys them as add-ons on Kubernetes. So there you go. So there's your Istio running. So now the next step is uh, we actually can come, come, come back and try and install an application on top of it, a microservices application to actually give you the power of Istio. Because then you can start to expose the, the more advanced traffic management, the more advanced security, the more advanced uh, in, uh, telemetry and being able to use telemetry to be able to rewrite across failures, be able to do things like A-B style deployments. But before we do that, I kind of ran through this really quickly. How many of you guys actually understood how Istio is working? Okay, you've probably been reading ahead, probably. So let, let me go back and explain it for the rest of you as to what, what, what's happening behind the scenes. So we just deployed that. But fundamentally, the way this works is uh, essentially you have this uh, uh, Istio that's running in, in the environment. And Istio is essentially creating the control rules to have the Envoy sidecar in each pod. Uh, the, the Envoy is actually acting on the rules. Istio is what's setting up the rules. So the users will interact with uh, Istio using something called Istio Pilot, which provides the front-end API for Istio. It used to be called Istio Manager. It's, it's been renamed as of the next release. I think it's going to be called Istio Pilot, which is why I, what I've used here. And in effect, the control flows, the users will plumb the rules as to how they want the traffic managed for their microservices, talking to uh, the Istio uh, Pilot component. Along with the Istio pilot, there's a couple of other components, uh, all of which they work hand in hand with the Istio uh, proxies. The Istio proxy essentially is an enhanced version of Envoy that's running as a sidecar in every pod, right? One of those is called Mixer. 
Mixer is a function by which you can leverage things like telemetry, what's happening in the real world, what kinds of response times are you seeing from different instances of the, uh, of the application. Are you seeing, for example, uh, better performance here or is one of your locations, are you seeing mediocre performance? So you can use that sort of telemetry to dynamically create policy to say, if you see this sort of performance threshold exceeded, start redirecting your traffic. You can also do things like, based on certain policy, redirect traffic a different way. So that's, that's what the mixer component does. The Istio auth function provides the security. And I have a slide coming up on that as well in terms of what it does. But essentially, that provides the encryption, the, the identity to be able to manage the encryption and manage flows on behalf of the application. right? And all of that is pushed down into the Envoy sidecars running on every pod. And then once those rules are actually in the Envoy sidecar, the Envoy proxy then, in a transparent fashion to the application, provides the necessary traffic management or security or other service mesh functions so that independent of the application knowing about this, all of these are provided as part of your Kubernetes fabric. Okay? And so that's architecturally how this works. And so Envoy works as a sidecar, and the Istio control confidence work uh, separately from that. Istio Pilot itself is, is designed to work across multiple orchestrators. Right now, the focus is Kubernetes. Right? In the future, there's, uh, hopefully, this will be expanded to other orchestrators. But right now, the in intent is to start with Kubernetes to make sure this works really well with Kubernetes. Um, and, and, but it, the architecture itself allows itself to have a plug-in model to support other orchestrators. Coming to the Istio auth portion, which provides the security. So like I said, Envoy is the, func is the sidecar proxy that's actually doing the actual packet uh, redirection or the actual functions, the data. It's, it's in the data path. Uh, the Istio uh, control components are actually creating the rules talking to the, to the Envoy proxy, sidecar proxy. And as an example, one of the functions that is provided here is the ability to do uh, transparent to the application knowing about that uh, mutual TLS, and uh, basically symmetric TLS. And to be able to do that using a, not just a single certificate authority, but a certificate authority with delegation to multiple CAs that are specific to individual flows and identities. So you can actually do some pretty sophisticated uh, identity and security based on identity that allow you to have independent CAs for individual application flows if you so want it. And to be able to do that transparently of the application. So the application is just talking via what it thinks is HTTP, but the traffic going on the wire is encrypted using a, uh, a, a, a CA chain, essentially. So there's some pretty advanced capabilities here, and this is just a quick glimpse as to some of those capabilities. And Mixer, like I said, has the ability to leverage things like telemetry data from a variety of backends. Maybe your cloud provider is providing you telemetry. Maybe uh, Prometheus is providing you telemetry. It's, it has the ability to get telemetry and other data from a variety of backends, and to be able to leverage that to dynamically create policy or add to the policy that's being created so that Envoy can sort of redirect traffic based on what you're seeing in the real world, right? And it's a very powerful concept. And in terms of the kinds of traffic management you can do, and these are just simple examples. There's a lot more sophisticated examples if you go to the website and look at some of the concepts there. And there's still a lot more being developed. But th being able to do things like uh, uh, redirect traffic based on application headers or HTTP headers to a Canary version. So for example, if you have if you want to try out a new version of an application, you roll it out, but say only users who are logged in with a certain username will be redirected that way. All other users will get to the regular production version of the application. It's a way to try out new builds before they're necessarily production ready of your application, by the way. You could do things like use user agents or other HTTP headers. So for example, you could redirect your iPhone traffic or versus an Android traffic. I'm not sure why you'd want to do that, but people do strange things. You can, you can do all kinds of interesting sort of redirections and traffic management based on uh, application headers. So um, you guys still with me? No one's, no one's sleeping? OK, you had a question?
see how that works in the kind of microservice to microservice to the side of Kubernetes. Because uh, something I know you're wrestling with is like, okay, we have a Cisco at the back end. I'm going to my database. I need to configure a firewall rule in the Cisco that I guarantee the type of the application I guess is running. Yep, yeah. So the question is, how do you manage identity beyond Kubernetes to other infrastructure that's running on, on other environments, right? And that's a really good question, but it's also a really advanced question. One part of that I'll, I'll touch on in a, in a minute when I talk about how you do policy along with uh, something like Ischio and, and, and uh, Envoy. But that's a question I might have to come back to, and in fact, we might have to take it offline. So anyway, let's try deploying an application. This is the sort of the Ischio uh, canonical example that they have published on the website. Essentially, it's a microservices application with multiple tiers. You've got a front-end tier that's a, something called a product page, which is a simple book, bookstore kind of product page, or book a review site product page. That could potentially redirect to one of multiple backends, providing reviews on that bookstore. And so those reviews get stored in the backend thing called ratings, right? And so this is essentially a multi-tiered microservices application, multiple microservices sort of collaborating with each other to perform a function. And so what we'll do is we'll deploy this on top of Istio, and then we'll do a couple of things. We'll actually try and do, define policy so to do a couple of things. One is Istio takes care of transparent redirection and securing the flows, but it doesn't take care of things like the network policy to make sure that the reviews application is only accessible to the product page and that people from the rest of the infrastructure cannot directly talk to or attack the reviews application to make sure that people cannot talk to the ratings application directly. So basically do that sort of pinhole policy that says only this application instances can talk to each other and to be able to do that. And that's where net Kubernetes network policy comes to play, right? So that's where we've been collaborating on some of that network policy uh, integrations. But before we get to that, let's actually deploy the application. All right, so we are here, so everything's running, no restart, so that's, that's a good sign. Um, all right, so. Don't actually need to do that in the newest version, but that's fine. Um, Just want to make sure I get the SQL cuttle command. Okay. So there's your booking for application, and essentially, uh, my mistake there. The way you do that is cube inject. Essentially, what you're doing is you're asking Istio Cuttle to inject the Envoy proxy into the pod using the YAML for the application. So that's essentially how you do it. And so essentially, Istio Cuttle has injected that. Cube Cuttle is launching the pods. It should take a few seconds for the application. The application is a little bit heavyweight at this point. So it takes more than like two or three seconds, but it should come up pretty soon. Let's give it a second here. While you're doing that, the, the way you actually distinguish between these sort of backends on the application is one of them provides uh, red stars for the reviews, one of them provides black stars, and one of them doesn't provide the stars at all, right? So that way you know which backend you're going to. So when you, depending on if you have rules or not, if you're just doing default round robin, every attempt will get a different sort of colored star. And then you can use flexible rules to redirect to out versions of the application. See if this has come up. All right, it's up. Now, uh, actually, before we do that, let's do one more thing.
So the inverse is on port 31, 2, 2, 4. So if we go into product page, there's your little book info application that's been deployed. And if you just do a reload, you should see different instances coming up. So this one's with the black stars. This one's with no stars. This one's with the red stars. So essentially, you're doing a simple load balancing, right? And so essentially, you're redirecting your front end product page application to different back ends right now without any rules. Istio simply does round robin, right? So that's, that's the default. Now, let's get to some of the more powerful concepts of Istio, which is being able to do more advanced uh, redirections. So I had a couple I used as an examples here. So for example, I have this little YAML that says, uh, redirect, to, uh, redirect to version three of the application if the user is Karthik, right? So if someone is logged in as Karthik, then always redirect into version three. So if you do this, so you would do Right. So now if we go back here and do a reload. Now it's still going to the, all the versions because I'm not logged in. So let me log in. All right, and so now I'm logged in as Karthik. Now if I, read, if I do a reload, it always goes back to the third version, which is the red stars, right? So a little bit of how you can do some flexible routing based on things like HTTP headers or user logins, right? So you can try canary style deployments. Another example of something you can try. So I'm showing you Calico Cuddle right now. That's the Calico version is telling you uh, what's actually the current policies in the system. So it tells you all the different workloads right now. So there's obviously different services running and there's different sort of policies applied to them. And so I can do things like, but now if I go to Sure. So, I, I looked it up, but. yeah, the question is, what, what's the magic with SQL CQL? So before I get to the policy. So there's two things, right? When you first launch the application, you're doing a SQL Cuttle cube inject. So what that does is it injects the, the uh, Envoy proxy sidecar into, a, into the pod spec for the application so that the Envoy is launched as part of the application. The second thing it, I did was I ran this command, istio cuttle create with a YAML, which is the, the more advanced policy that I want istio to program into the Envoy sidecar to do more advanced policy redirection, security, various other functions. And so essentially that's encapsulated in that YAML syntax. And so this is where you can do more advanced sort of policy redirections. Okay. Um, to give you an example of what So if I do a kubectl get service for things like Zipkin, for example, Zipkin is 31058. So there's my Zipkin interface. But let's say you guys are being nasty and you're starting to attack my Zipkin for whatever reason, I want to turn that off. So what I can do is, uh, actually I need to figure out what's the IP here. Is 
I'm going to create some policy, or I guess I had that already, that says any traffic coming from this subnet, I can use policy coming tied to other environments, mesos, OpenStack, uh, bare metal Linux instances, IP addresses, IP ranges. That's the power of Calico, is to be able to tie network policy to all of this. To say anything coming from this IP address range, but that's destined to the Zipkin application, irrespective of where that Zipkin application is running on, on Kubernetes, I want to deny, right? So I could do things like, like that. So I would do that via Calico. And And so if I look at the Zipkin, for example, so uh, I had another policy there previously. Oh, sorry. Thank you. There you go. Oh, delete policy, sorry. I forgot the policy part. All right, so now if I try and go back to the Zipkin dashboard and try in the new window. So it should no longer be able to connect, essentially. Yeah, you had a question. So the policy and identity, which is like the name my team is, uh, I don't know if you guys are familiar with Hydra and Latin. Um, can we plug that, the, our own policy engine, uh, whether or not it's used on a YAML? So Calico provides the policy implementation. Now, let's talk offline in terms of what your Calico policy, what the other policy engine is, whether it can interface with Calico, because Calico has, has a sort of open interface and it's, uh, if you look at the Calico policy implementation, it's a superset of what's available in Kubernetes network policy uh, because the team band project Calico helped develop network policy for Kubernetes. So you'll find the same concepts. Typically in Kubernetes, you cannot do things like uh, egress policy today. You cannot do more operational focused elements. Calico does have a few more concepts, but using the Calico cuttle as opposed to cube cuttle. Now, if you're doing the same thing using kubectl, you can do the same thing, except you wouldn't be able to do the IP address range, or you wouldn't be able to do egress. There's some other concepts that you can do in Calico Cuttle that you couldn't do in kubectl, but it's the same syntax, essentially. Oh, was another question? Yeah. Uh, this might be a kind of 
theoretical question, but and maybe if anyone else is familiar, but if you're familiar with capability-based security versus access control list-based security, what I'm kind of confused about uh, is why all these systems seem to be based on ACL-based security rather than, you know, something more capability style. Yeah, no, no, good question. And this, what I was actually showing you is one example of using IP addresses, but the more powerful concepts which Calico can do, which I didn't show today, was to be able to use more uh, policy based on labeling that, Kuber that is done in Kubernetes by default. So for example, in Kubernetes, you would label individual objects like pods to say this object belongs to project A and this object is a front end pod, right? Now, when you say capabilities, there's sort of a lot of power encapsulated behind this uh, that, that are possible using the Kubernetes network policy abstractions uh, that are sort of dynamically in implemented by Calico. If you actually go to the Calico project website and the blog post, there's a couple of demos that we published and how you can actually do some of the more dynamic policy uh, in Calico, enforcing this in lockstep with Istio and uh, Envoy. Now, when you say capability, was that sort of what you're asking for or something different? Well, I mean, labeling is an example of ACL-based security. Right? Okay, so what were you referring to then? Uh, it, I mean, it's, it's an abstract question. I, 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 probably it's not appropriate for me to explain what capability-based okay, security is. Okay, let's talk offline because I think I know what you're talking about, but I, I, let's go into that in more detail offline. There's a question in the back. I think this was sort of the presentation, so that was sort of a demo in, in honor of the British election, you know, Cube cuddle, Calico cuddle, Istia cuddle, go, go play with it. It's super easy to do, as you guys saw. Right? Questions? Uh, yeah, so for those of us that have been running uh, Calico for a while, how does Istio live side by side in a traditional Calico architecture with Calico policy? Is everything uh, copacetic working together? Yeah, so there's like two or three things which I'll highlight for you. There's actually a lot of, we've been, the uh, Tigera team, the Project Calico team has been collaborating with both uh, Envoy and the Istio team going back, uh, going back a ways. But um, I'll give you a couple of examples. One is, uh, first of all, from a Calico perspective, this works seamlessly. Calico being a very simple and scalable architecture, it doesn't get in the way. So unlike if you're using things like maybe more complex overlays where sometimes you might be fighting with each other in terms of how an application level traffic management fabric is kind of route traffic versus a infrastructure. So that's one thing, Calico works seamlessly. The second thing is I gave you the example where in something like Istio, you're doing flexible traffic management and policy based on application level artifacts. Calico does traffic management and, and policy based on layer three and four. And so uh, when you look at this, these all work seamlessly together and it gives you security at all levels of the stack. Uh, so for example, when you, look, when you look at your laptops today, uh, how many of you guys have firewalls running on your laptops? Hopefully all of you, if not, you're gonna be in trouble, right? Uh, and that's despite the fact that you're still using things like SSL for your application flows. That's despite the fact that you might have applications that have their own protections. So typ typically in a, in a real world environment, you want to have security at the network level that's doing certain things, and you want to have security at the application level that's doing different things. So that's the way I would describe what Istio and Envoy provide, which is at the application level, versus what Calico provide, which is at the network level, right? And they work hand in hand. And so if you go to the Project Calico website, we actually had a blog post on examples of how you can do network policy in Calico in conjunction with Istio's uh, policy so that as this application gets deployed through Istio, uh, the application traffic management is taken care of by Istio, but Calico is simultaneously doing the network policy in Kubernetes so that the application flows that are happening are only the ones that are required for the application and you're not, for example, allowing people to directly access the backend rating site or the backend. It follows the application flows. So I guess uh, to, to ask my question more specifically then, is there, does Istio impose itself on all applications within the same cluster, or can I run some with pure Calico management side by side with Absolutely. ones running with Istio? You, you, can run, you can run both. So Istio, okay. so as you saw the example there, the way you would inject the Envoy proxy using uh, uh, Istio Cuttle uh, Cube Inject, which I think will, they'll, they're working on making it more automatic over time. But you don't need to inject that into every application. So you can have other applications running with Calico and simple network policy as well. 
Um, I, had, I had one other thought I was going to bring up there, but it'll come to me. Um, I Thanks. lost my train of thought. Any other questions? Up front. Uh, probably couple. last last question before you're out of time. I'll probably be around well, afterward. I want to hear the Linkerd comparison. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, you, you just mentioned that they're working on injecting it automatically. Obviously, this is a, a crutch that's useful. It's practical. Uh, are they trying to use that, uh, do that using admission controllers? What, what has been thought about uh, a more automated way of injecting that site? Uh, there's actually been some chat on that. I haven't been plugged into the latest, so I'm going to defer the question. I, I'm not, probably not the best person to, ask that, uh, to answer that question. I would invite you to just join the Istio Slack. There's actually a lot of traffic on that now. It was publicly announced like a week ago. And so there's been a lot of really interesting dialogue and discussions. So, but I, I don't think I'm qualified to answer your question, so I'm not going to try and venture a guess as to how they're going to implement it. The, the docs, when I was up, OK. I know there's been a lot of debates and dialogue as well. Last question. Hi. So one of the, uh, just a question I thought, you know, there's very smart routing or traffic routing in this Istio. Um, if you had a Kubernetes cluster that was spread across, uh, not federated, but one cluster that's maybe across multiple regions or multiple availability zones, can Istio out of the box um, preferentially pick pods that are in the same region or same availability zone? Uh, you know, is it's going for ingress? Or, you understand. Yes, I understand your question. And uh, there's all kinds of interesting combinations possible there. Uh, this is sort of the power of Calico today as well, in that uh, people have deployed Kubernetes at scale across different uh, locations. And there's lots of interesting recipes that I've worked with customers on that I've seen when doing things, everything from ECMP Anycast to interesting ways to be able to uh, uh, do traffic management at the network level. And being able to tie that into Ischio and be able to tie the two together so that you can do things at the application level and maybe uh, push things down into the network fabric and vice versa. There's all kinds of interesting possibilities there. So I, I, I'd say we are in the early stages of the different kinds of design artifacts and design recipes that are possible. Certainly what you say I think is well within the realm of possibility even today, I think, when Ischio, it's Ischio working with Calico, for example. Most of the clouds have, uh, or sorry, mo a lot of the cloud integrations put in, in the annotations like what region or availability zone you were in. So yeah, I mean, so is that something maybe it's, you should join the Slack and Yeah, you can, but you out. can actually do a lot of that today with Ischio. For example, Ischio, you can do egress as well. So you can redirect to different backend clouds if you need to. You can use telemetry and different pluggable telemetry providers so that you can do some interesting redirection based on the telemetry again. That's sort of core to the right. Istio functionality today. So absolutely everything you're asking for today is possible today. You okay. can do things purely with Istio. You can do other things with Istio working with the network fabric. And uh, if, if you actually start thinking ahead to some of the more interesting large scale design problems you, you encounter when you're deploying production, Kubernetes at scale, there's all kinds of interesting possibilities, which is why at Tagera we are super excited about this. We think this is going to be fantastic to have Istio and Onwa working together with Calico. And so there's a lot that we're doing, right? So thanks, thanks for that question. I'll leave you with one last thought while the next presenter is coming up, is uh, join the community. Uh, we're actually thinking of doing a little bit of a sort of a Kubernetes networking workshop, driving into some of these concepts in more detail, maybe in the next month or two. If you're interested, just go to that link uh, and express your interest and we'll ping you if we do encounter that or we do host that workshop here in New York at some point. Okay? Awesome. I have one final question. It's easy from online, which is, is Istio in the pipeline to be a CNCF project? Don't know. I, I don't think it's come up yet. I'm sure there'll be an uh, interesting dialogue on that going on. Uh, obviously, the CNCF is, uh, for example, recently CNI got pulled into the CNCF as a, as a CNCF project. I wouldn't be surprised. There's a lot of uh, interesting possibilities here, but I wouldn't venture a guess that I, your guess is as good as mine. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yes, apparently yes online. <laughs> Thank you. In process. All right. Up next, we have Flynn from Data Wire. Oh, yes, round of applause. And Carlos somewhere around there is going to grab you and ask you about Linkerd.